Ladies and gentlemen, I am Matt, and welcome to Q Manufacturing. For those of you that have come across from R Functional Print on Reddit, um, I'm going to. I'm not only a 3D printing channel. I do use 3D printing as part of my work, but I normally do um, composites and other bits and pieces like that. I do, however, owe you a video from sometime last year about this silicon injection system that I use for my silicon injection moulding. Uh, so this is going to be that video, and I think the best way to show you how this thing works is actually show you that my upgrade. So the things I'm going to change on this today is I'm going to go from a 5mm hose set because I found that there was a bit too much restriction in that length of hose um, getting out there. And it was a bit of a pain and it took a long time and instead of using this lever I ended up getting a pair of clamps and just sitting them on there to actually um, pull it in. So I'm going to go to an 8mm hose instead of a 5mm hose that should get a lot more flow. I'm also going to replace this back bracket here um, with this bracket here just to give a, a bit more rigidity because as you push on this with any kind of force that whole bracket kind of camps over a little bit. So bit of a thicker bracket, a bit deep, beefier, and it's now held in, instead of being in a line, it's now held in um, like properly constrained space. Uh, the cartridge adapters themselves are all 3D printed. These are all up on Thingiverse. There's a link in the comments below. Um, and all you do is you take you take your hose, which has got a, your barb fitting. It's just a normal 8mm PVC hose with a barb fitting. You just chop the end off the barb fitting uh, once it's in. That way you've got a like, nice flared base in order to get an interference fit inside here. So you just take your hose, you feed it through, and then because it's an interference fit, you've got to put a bit of force on it. I still don't have a press, so a portable press it is. So the bottom of these cartridges here is actually um, canted in towards the centre. So if you had a flush surface there, it would still flow. But I like to have a little bit of an extra outlet flow there just to enable it to um, flow better with less restriction. The cartridge is held in that orientation there through the back plate, which you can see here. Uh, so that hole there lines up with the flow direction into the nozzle. So the O-rings is a standard rubber O-ring and all you do to put them on is just slide them over this end, give them a bit of a stretch and then roll them down in place. Uh, because they've got a nice um, solid wall on that side, they actually will push into the tube relatively easily and they will seal in there nicely. But if you try and pull them back out, they will run up this ramp here and you end up with a very much a one-way valve. So once you put them on and you put them in the tube, you put them in the tube. Just going to use a little bit of Vaseline just around the just around the O-ring there, just to get, make it seal a bit better, less risk of tearing or anything like that. A bit of lube's good. So Vaseline or petroleum jelly doesn't inhibit the cure of platinum cure silicon, um, which makes it beneficial or useful in this situation. So they just slide in there quite nicely. You can feel it's a nice, or well, I can feel, you can't, but it's actually quite a nice um, sliding fit for an O-ring. Uh, so that's, that means that they're going to seal. So the next part is this retention bracket here. It just slides over the front of the tubes like that. And then the back of the tubes, we take this and we put this bracket over. So they don't need to be done up incredibly tight, just enough to you know, snug everything down and keep everything firmly attached. All right, before I screw this bracket down, I just want to show you that on this side here, I've actually got some, um, some additional holes in there. Uh, and same with this bracket here, you can't quite see it. Uh, I have contemplated motorizing this entire thing, so I've just thrown a couple of extra little mounting attachment points into the 3D print so that at some stage if I want to, I can bolt additional things to it to get rid of this whole bit here and maybe just have a push button. Um, but at this stage, I'm not going through enough of this to warrant that work. Now you want to be careful you don't do this front one up too tight uh, because it will actually collapse this tube a little bit and make it harder for um, the plungers to go through, which just adds more friction to the circuit and just makes the whole thing just a little bit more difficult to use. So my preferred method for tightening this is to tighten the outside ones first and then like tighten down to this very snug and everything is nice and secured and then just tighten the centre ones to provide the right amount of tension. Okay, next we have to replace the old nozzle section with the new nozzle section. This part has a chance of getting quite messy as we pull these two nozzles off. Um, so, I've got gloves on now. Um, really ill-fitting poor gloves because I've run out of my good ones and I can't get injured with the coronavirus. So before I go any further, these brackets here are near on a you know, size for size fit on this hose. Um, and all that happens is as the hose gets drawn up over, uh, over the nozzle here, um, it expands, it flares out, and then it pinches into the corners here to provide a seal and lock everything in place. All right, so when I was about to assemble that then, I actually realized that this hose here actually has to go further up the nozzle than this hose here, so we've got to put the nozzle off. 
uh, which means that using the same size brackets would not allow it to pull up without bottoming out this shelf here onto the front of the um, syringe. So I just ran off and printed up a new bracket that's 10 mil shorter and had my lunch at the same time. Uh, so convenience of YouTube editing. So I prepared a mold here. This one here is the injection mold variation of this one. This is the previous just to pour in and push on and clamp. Uh, this one is a bit more advanced. You fill up through the center. It's got some flow passages in the bottom section that um, push up through the middle section. And also instead of having 3D printed center pins, which you can see down there, um, this one has dowel pins, um, like proper ground fitted dowel pins. So this mold here is actually to make this part here, which is a vacuum infusion connector for the composites work I do. Uh, the washer that you can see here is glued on after it's come out of the mold. Uh, you put a layer of tape around that and put your vacuum bag over the top of it. And then you put a six millimeter PVC hose uh, or vinyl hose, much like these, just a bit smaller, through the center there. It allows you to chase leaks a bit easier and get vacuum in and infusion out or get resin in and vacuum out. Shameless plug. So if you look here, you can see I've taken the infusion nozzle or the mixing nozzle and chopped the tip off. This gives me a greater outflow area again because that's too small. And we're just going to remove the cap. Put the infusion nozzle on. Stick it in the mould. And now pump. So that flow is better than it used to be. It's still pretty average. Um, my lever here is pretty... You can see the silicon's just started coming out of the top there. So that means the mold's completely full. So as you can probably tell, I didn't actually work out um, the best. It was better than it was previously, but I still had to use two sets of clamps here because this uh, lever was, well, gave me some nice marks on my hands. I think it almost cut me at one stage where it was the uh, little sharpie on the edge where it was attached to the bed. Um, I don't think I'm quite happy with that. Leave it with me. All right, the day is tomorrow, and this mold has had time to cure up. So before we get into the upgrades to the injector system, we're just going to dismantle this mold, show you how the mold system itself works, and just show you what the existing parts or what the parts look like that are coming out of it. So you've got to remove this overflow at the top here, otherwise the um, silicon parts are mechanically locked to the top section of the mold. So you can see the bottom half here, there's a custom O-ring there to seal the fluid flow passages. So that's your fluid flow passages there. The, the uh, silicon comes in the center, goes down there and then flows through those passages then up through the gaps here. You can see the dow pins that we've used here. And then if you look at the bottom of the middle section of the mold, you can see where the silicon comes through the center. You can see these flow passages out to the end molds. Um, you can see them sitting proud slightly, actually looks pretty good. And there we go, so now we have the three mold parts, the breather holes, and you can see the mold or the bits um, in the center. So now I just need to chop the, the risers off. And we should be able to push the center bits out. You've got these two little domes here, got these two little truncated cones here, uh, and they actually locate the mold on there, so that goes together in that direction like that. And then on this top section to, to locate, we have uh, a little conical feature on each of the mold cavities that seals it off and also um, locates everything properly, as well as the, the dowel pins inside, which line up with the, with the respective holes uh, in each of these features here. Right, so with the parts themselves, you might be able to see, but there's some very minor air bubbles in there, but you know, nothing crazy, about a millimeter or so in size. Um, the parts are like, nice and solid, they're you know, fully conformed to the mold. There's no flashing on the inside there where the, the dowel pin was and it's also a really nice and shiny smooth surface. So it'll be a good seal on the tube they go on to. All right, so they're all pretty consistent, they're all nice. Um, I'm rather happy with them and the way the mold's performed. I just need to get it to fill a bit faster. Uh, so these are gonna go away now into their container uh, while we fix up the injector. Um, and then they'll be ready for the, the next Set to go and join them and then the batch processing afterwards. All right, we're back, modifications are done. Uh, you can see here there's this 3D printed bracket that uh, accepts the head of a, what's that, DeWalt um, 300 mil, 450 mil clamp. 
Um, and then I've reinforced the bracket at this end here, so I've over doubled it in thickness, just so it distributes that force that's coming from a single point just a bit easier. Uh, removed the, the cable run or the ratchet run that was around there, and I've also refilled it. Um, so now that's all been done, uh, the mold's been prepped. Let's see how this modification goes. So it's uh, still slow. So I think my flow restriction is now in here somewhere. Um, and I have to redesign those bits and pieces in order to get that better. It might be a part two to this video in six months. And it's through. So ladies and gents, that concludes uh, this particular video on my silicon injector. Um, it needs some work in case you can't tell. It's improved from what it was with the five millimeter hoses, but I think the bottleneck is now being pushed definitely down into, uh, into the section here, requiring uh, a bit of a redesign going on there. You can tell it works. It does a better job than uh, mixing silicon by hand and trying to vacuum it and degas it. It's a bit neater. Um, you don't get bubbles in it, so that's all really nice. You don't have to do any of that you know, screwing around side of things. Um, but as you saw over here, the flow rate's not the best. It took about uh, 12 minutes to fill this mold here, and that's only 80 grams of silicon. So I'm going to need to do something to fix that. Uh, stay tuned, and we'll see what comes out of it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.